I have a Harley, Harley Davidson, or we burn rubber like they torch or rigs, and her hair is yellow, and her teeth are sharp, or we rob a big money, babe, and she play the harp. She sing to me folk songs all about death. When I asked her why, she said, it's the best, so I lick my third hand.
Are you clipping that next one? No, you don't clip, no. Oh. Just, uh, yeah, I'll be watching, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, just gonna make it smooth though. Of so course. Like, well, I've been lady on it for like two months here, so... I know, you know, I'm just, I'm just reminding you. Yeah. Oh, man. It's like when you say, well, I don't let you hit the tree, don't worry, like you did. And I nearly had second asshole. <laughs> oh, are you okay? Mount Aropolis, there is this amazing climb called Punks in a Gym. Uh, Punks in a Gym is the first AB plus in the world, being climbed by Volkan Gulli in 1987. 85. 85. <laughs> and he's dead now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he's dead now. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been trying. Uh, I've been trying Rude on and off um, for last year, and uh, I spent I spent um, uh, two months uh, trying the Rude, but it was like it wasn't very consistent because the conditions weren't always the best, and it's very condition dependent. Plus, um, first three weeks I progressed on the Rude really well. Um, I worked all the moves. Uh, I worked the crux move, which took me the longest, the drive-by jump move, because you know, it's very unique and I think yeah, it's, um, it's quite hard for girls, because <laughs> it's a very shouldery move. Come on, go for it. Good you know. Discover, like because it's so flat. It's like grabbing your fridge. Grabbing the fridge, yeah. And then you do a drive by. It's like drive over to, where, to the bird from, bar. From like a left smear. Yeah. It's like jumping it's into really the pacing. freezer. You have to drive down on that. It's like jumping into the freezer. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So left side, um, the actual crux move after the top shelf. The, the top shelf set, setting, up, <laughs> setting up, setting up for the actual Hold crux on. move. How much do I want to root? Um, it's my dream. I want to do it and I'll do anything it takes to do it. And I'm back, I'll be back when the conditions improve and, and then, yeah, I'll do it. Trying the route. Oh, I started trying the route in 2002. Um, I was actually guiding some some friends out in the Kachung area, and I had a bit of a nasty abseil ac accident off the end of the rope. It was a bit of a 15 metre spill down a low angled rock face, and I sprained my ankle, and that kind of hampered my attempts on the route. <laughs> and um, then I went back. I think when did I go back? I must have gone back in about 2008 or something. Maybe it was 2009 and 2007, there you go. And um, <clears throat> I had some bad experiences with fixed protection on the wall. Um, yeah, the wire broke and I swung in, creamed the rock face. Yeah, me all in, in. You merely gave me a bad belay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, and that ended pretty abruptly with a sore rib cage. And, um, oh. Yeah, well, when I did it, it actually, which was last year, 2010, it was, um, yeah, it's just jugs, you know, it's probably, it's probably, I don't know why it was the first 8B plus in the world. I think since the hold's been manufactured, it's probably more like 8A, 8A plus, but, you know, which is 30 on the Eubank scale. I think it's a great route nonetheless and you know I enjoy climbing it and it's just it's good that it's just a piece of cake these days. <laughs> took him fucking three weeks I was there. <laughs> Solid three weeks. Yeah, he said like he's gonna do all I'm gonna do it the second day. Fucking bullshit. Three solid weeks on and off. 
Honestly, I've been there, I've been blank, uh, exactly hey, those yeah. third way. How many times have I done it? And the, hey, yeah, but if you were here for two months. How many times have I done and it? And you've just been trying Somalia now, you say that it's 8 a day. Eight, 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 eight. Fuck. <laughs> it's bullshit. Everything is 8 day, according to this. <laughs> like if it, I mean, if it was 8 day, you should have on it. Not take 12 years to do 18 years to do I don't on site 8 days. Don't take it to heart. It's just a joke. It's just a joke, dear. What's wrong with you? Don't stream. It's not very nice. To ah! just, it hurts, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> I can't believe that you said that it's eight day. Well, eight day plus. Yesterday, I got pushed in the dirt, dragged by my feet, 
and buried in the rain. Today, it's payback.
heart is the wheel of fortune. Wheel of life. I think we should do it again, Ed. <laughs> Let's do it again. Seem to find peace and come and find me Oh!
So here we are with uh, Stunt Monkey. It's a pleasure to see you. I've seen you in action today, which has been absolutely thrilling. Um, now you've done two base jumps uh, so far. What do you think about the the laws and their effects? Okay. Um, if jailed, how would you feel about a life behind bars? And do you think you're a, a positive role monkey? And what's your fascination with uh, bananas? <laughs> Top or bottom? <laughs> what else can we ask? <laughs> Stuff like me. Oh, wait on me. Alright. Is all right, I'm ready? Ready. ready. All right. The Death Swing was initially just uh, a far out concept of an unreal action. Um, I'd done the hang rock rope swing in a harness, you know, heaps of times when I was young, 14. Everyone's done it, it's the classic, it's heaps of fun. Rope jumping is just great. Um, and oh, it was a dream for so long, I had it for like a few years to uh, do this Death Swing, do the. Um, the hang rock rope swing, just holding onto loops and then letting go at the other end and just flying and doing some flips, doing whatever, pulling your parachute and landing. And after having done all the base jumping and got my skills up, there was finally a time when I actually had all the necessary requirements to be able to pull it off. So let me get this right. You want me to, to jump off there, hold on to the rope, <laughs> let go and do a tool backflip at, at the other end. Yeah. It's for a movie called Smitten. I'll give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. And this is just for starters. Yeah, this is just the first one. And you're going to buy me dinner, right? That's the deal. This is for dinner. Take away. Okay, yeah. Chips and gravy. Alright. Fuck, I'll do it twice for gravy. The best thing about being scared is afterwards. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, lift up.
So what happened was we did the, the death swing as per usual um, for the fifth jump of the day. Also one, my 100th jump, which is a good number. Um, <laughs> something's always gonna go uh, a bit wrong on your 100th jump. So yeah, I jumped off, triple back flip, but because we've done it so many times, I thought, all right, I'll do a one tuck double layout. Um, double layout went pretty well, but I had my legs a bit apart during the rotation. Uh, pitched my pilot shoot and um, got caught around my leg, uh, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> funny situation because that means your parachute doesn't open. But um, fortunately, um, well, no, I don't really have a story of success there. I <laughs> proceeded to spiral and tumble into the ground <laughs> without my parachute open. Um, but it did manage to um, come out of the bag just before I hit the ground. And somehow, I don't know how it came out of the bag, and I don't know how I managed to survive, <laughs> but um, I landed, boom, standing on the ground, just like, boom. And, <laughs> and I don't even know like, uh, how that happened. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Like, a real adventure, a really good adventure. And I don't have a scratch on me. No helmet, no boots, bobs, knee pads, shin pads. And I'm freaking terrific. Hey, How are you? Yeah, good. Good to see you. We've just been a great day in the Blue Mountains where you've been uh, climbing, jumping, freaking people out, culminating in a nude uh, bass solo. So my uh, first and uh, most important question would be, shrinkage, what do you do about it? <laughs> Not much of an issue, really. Um... Floyd! <laughs> <laughs> High five, that was a good one. How's that for a beginning? <laughs> that was pretty good. That I was don't a tough know. Um, I, throw I don't know, not much of an issue. I just don't really think about that. Not really something I like to particularly feel favoured in um, joking about. Very serious topic, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Progress from rock climbing towards the other things that you do, including base jumping. <laughs> um, very in, um, inspirational video, actually. Australian climbing movie, coming at Hyper. No, but um, climbing and base jumping pretty related. Uh, when you're climbing out there on the cliffs, you always see base jumpers. Well, always, maybe once a year, you'll see a base jumper. But it's thrilling. You're like, man, you know, what I'm doing is 
you know, pretty fun, but well, what they're doing looks unreal. And uh, so as I grew up through climbing, I thought, oh, you know, if there's ever anything else I wanted to do, it was going to be base jumping. And when I came to a stage in my life where I couldn't climb anymore because of just injuries, um, that's where I went. That's lucky, man. That's lucky. Yeah, that's right. But just like... You really won't. I don't know, I suppose it's unnecessary shit like going out of I like the fact that it's okay. Fucking rock. Ah! Cool. You did. Hey, this plank's not going to snap off our through, is it? Maybe. Nah. No. It's a tested painter's plank. Is it fucking termite infected and shit? It's not. I like the perforation. It's still got concrete. reinforced with concrete. I'm an idiot. I'm fucking terrified. That's good. First time I've seen you terrified. Look how fucking flexed it's getting. I know. That's right. why I thought it's getting really flush. flexed, eh? A real man to do a handstand. Can we shorten it? We can't. It looks like it's about to snap. Yeah, it is. You know. It's going to bend, eh? You have to do the handstand, not from the very end. Halfway along it. Cool. I don't think, I think you should come back and pull the plank in a bit more. Cheers, bro. You get a plank from it. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Um, no, I'm fine. Stand there. Um, I think it's good to walk to the end. I'm just going to walk to the end of now. All right. Feral, you should put a rig on just in case it does break. You're not going off this grant. Too far from that. I can't believe I did that without a rig. I'm pretty brave. Sometimes. Did you do it before with no rig on? Yeah. Uh, way out. Like as Sorry. far out as I could have it. I just go with my iPhone can zoom in. Okay. You guys ready? <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm okay. fucking terrified! Oh, <laughs> you luck. Good on, mate. This would be an awesome job to get a 180 on. Yeah. <laughs> wow. As well, it ends well. I love climbing because it takes you to some fabulous places in Australia and around the world. Uh, you have the opportunity to meet some fantastic people and continue relationships throughout your life. Um, I like the physical and the mental aspects of climbing because they challenge you both in both of those aspects. 
Um, it's like cryptic crossword puzzle solving in some respects. It's, um, it's addictive. I moved to the Blue Mountains about 10 years ago for my climbing. It's predominantly, well, it's all sandstone rock and there's over 3,000 roots spread over a large area, over 50 crags. It um, offers something for everyone. There's sport climbing, trad climbing, mixed climbing. So whatever tickles your fancy, it's available. And it's a great place to live and hang out and be part of the climbing community. I'm a mum. My daughter's name is Coco and she's just over two years old. Um, I was still climbing when I was 14 weeks pregnant with her and I was lucky enough to tick a 31 at that time. And funnily enough, when I was pregnant and climbing, I felt much better on rock than I actually did on the ground. Um, I don't know what it was, but I just, maybe it took my mind off things. Um, and it just, I felt natural actually climbing. Um, when she was born, I, I didn't climb for six weeks. And I even went to the gym at six weeks and then went straight back home again because I didn't feel ready. But then the next week it was like a magnetic attraction. I pulled on and I was definitely re rearing and ready to go. And lucky enough, there's a bouldering mums group up here at that time. And I fell in, into, into that group and they offered me a lot of support and um, feedback and motivation. Crash over gong, she steals the show. Riding on the back of the tangerine bird. With the crash over gong, she steals the show. Riding on the back of the tangerine bird. With a twinkle in her eye, she steals my breath. Climbing is such an integral part of my life and it's very rewarding for me. Um, just being on rock, it's, yeah, it's different to just training indoors. Being on rock is something that's like soul food. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful.
Tom Farrell. I'm from Camden, Southwest Sydney. Been climbing for about 14 years, and yeah, I'm a boulderer. This is good. <laughs> Sydney's a top place to live. It's got lots of little crags everywhere, all near the houses and that, and short walks. Yeah, it's little caves, great problems. Yeah, it's no fun. <laughs> Uh, double demerit's pretty cool. It's just a whole lot of fridge slapping and big moves, a lot of tension, and pretty fun. Gonna drop. Now 
I'm the illest motherfucker that you ever saw. Ready for any situation that it could be the grand for four or five shooter. I might switch into a Ruger. Who the fuck you thought this was smoking the Buddha? But you up on the mic and screw your head tight, cause the red light to stop the traffic. I keep the static to a minimum. Fuck what you thought, my shit be killing them all, cause I'm pillin' them caps off. No doubt, I put it work with a day at night shifts. You know my team go more tighter than fight scripts. I bet you thought you was probably the nicest. Till I spit, now you just sound the hype kid. Or maybe hot cabbage, I'm a savage. I push back your cabbage, fuck it like a blank marriage. Revolver, nickel plate to your face. Fucking keys, leave the place without a trace. Now I'm the illest motherfucker that you ever saw. My natural born asshole that like the brawls. So if you put it with a squad, just to bring them all. And if you ain't about cheese, then we can't be cool. Cause they don't tell them what this stupid ass might do. I can't afford you fucking up on plans. Fuck it, go hard, don't know when cops are grams for my money. Get that, flip that, watch what you say, my get gotta be yeah. kick back. Yeah, let's turn the one that you're going to do. Why are you so stuff. nervous then? Family stuff. Family stuff. Uh, okay, we'll try. I, we haven't had any, um, anyway. What did you say that was funny? Dad leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll leave this well, to he, Leone. He's not part of the family. <laughs> 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 he's not their real father. <laughs> <laughs> so apart from John not being the real father, all the children being accidents, is there anything else that you'd actually like to tell me? Well, if you can turn the camera off, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> oh, sure. It's off now. <laughs> Obviously, you're, you're both very proud of your sons and what they've achieved. No. Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, yes. No, we are proud of them, um, but... People often say that sort of thing. I'll let you have a word in a minute, love. <laughs> People Which often say sure? that kind of thing. <laughs> and, but I, I maintain it's more important that they're nice people and they're good to their parents. <laughs> yeah. John, don't you think? Yes. Hmm. yes. <laughs> I told you he was a quiet one. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are proud of them and yes, their achievements. Yeah. It's been mind-blowing, really. Um, to hear the other day that Lee was down in the Grampians and he had done a number 33 climb. Oh, sorry, that's not what you call it. <laughs> sorry. He had done a pretty fabulous climb. <laughs> and I heard about it second hand and then he was very, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was good to do it. He's, they're very humble and we often are the last people to hear about their, their achievement section, yes. which is a bit annoying. But we are proud of them. Okay. 
So I've heard that you guys have done a lot in the Diamond Falls area. How did you get started there? Well, it was kind of the place to be in the late 90s. And since, in the decades since, it's been like probably the most like influential crag for hard climbing in Australia. And as a result, it's like we've spent a bunch of time trying to do things that haven't been done or that were hard and stuff. Ah, sweet. Cool. You've also done quite a lot of climbing in Victoria. What um, areas have you been working lately? Um, do you want to go again? Like, <laughs> we don't really work areas. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing out there? You just got to stand by the cliff face and wait for people to walk past. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down on the corner. You've got to put it off me. Well, here we are. Taipan Wall in the Grampians. Um, not so long ago, maybe two years, I think, or so, just after I did the groove train, I was just strolling like a little happy lamb down here, as you do, done it a hundred times. Fateful day though, strolling along here, and I snagged my foot. I don't know what on by gum, some sort of little chicken head. <clears throat> and um, yeah, strolling along, Jesus Christ, snagged foot, 
facing off the ledge, shit me, Rhonda, what do I do? And so I had to leap off to set my foot free, but then I was, I was mid-air falling and I was like, Jesus Christ, what on earth to do? And luckily, all my highball practice from years gone by um, put me in good stead to um, land safely, which I did, but then I got knocked out and pissed myself and frothed to the mouth and had seizures. But um, <clears throat> so I actually fell from pretty much here, I think, right here, just down to there, where Zach, Zachy boy is, quite a way. And then we yourself, Zach, because that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Yeah, that was pretty, pretty good. And um, yeah, so then I had to um, get helicoptered out from the rocks over there down to Melbourne Hospital. And it was a laugh, here I am today, sweet as. Got a puncture on my leg actually, I'll show you. See that scar? From a hole that I got from a tree, I think, on the way down. <sighs> Thank goodness they've mm, gone. Yeah. Tell me, do you have a favourite? Um, oh, I don't think you can have a favourite. We've got three children, I couldn't choose a favourite. Lee. Um, the groove chain is a route up on Taipan Wall. It's an extension to a route called Groovy, which is, um, was a 28, but the extension makes it 33, and it goes up this really radical black streak. And um, yeah, it's in the Grampians National Park in Victoria, and it's pretty sweet. So uh, the first part of the groove chain is, I suppose, Groovy, which is the 28 bit. Uh, it goes up this radical scoop, which is all slick and quite technical. It has a few tricky moves, but it's not too bad, really just sort of stemming and that sort of thing and then you come out on the face and then go back into the next scoop which is pretty rad and um yeah it's pretty sweet gets you a little bit pumped but it's, it's not too hard all right so um groovy was bolted i think in 97 by rich heap and then uh the extension was bolted by zach virtues i think in 2002 something like that um and didn't, I don't think it got tried that much just because it's a bit awkward to work because it's quite run out and that sort of thing. But I probably first tried it, uh, I think, when I did Gilgamesh, which was probably two, late 2008. And I think I, I almost did it that trip. I fell off probably three moves from the top that trip, but I didn't manage it. And then um, the next trip back came down. First day, I just did all the moves, did all the sections. And then the next morning, I think I did it first go on a, on a foggy, brooding morning. Uh, in 2009, I think, March 28th. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fucking rad. Um, once you get to the top of Groovy, I suppose you have a bit of a, a rest with a knee bar, but you're not really that pumped, so you just sort of do a token shake out. And uh, you leave that, you do a bit of a pounce up to a jug, and um, what do you do? You have this awkward little rock over on some little slopey things, it's a bit sort of sequency, but once you sort that out, you get to a pretty good edge, you make a clip, and the next section, which goes into the black streak, is pretty radical.
So after the rest, I suppose you're shaking out on that black streak for a little while because it's a jug. Um, you're a little bit pumped when you leave it, but oh, it's not too bad. But um, you make some big moves up to it, some edges. You just, again tuck into the wall really tight. Do some little tick tacky moves on some pinches, which is rad. And um, what do you do? Come down to an edge, go up to an edge, go up again, and you have to get yourself in this funny little back step thing and oh, snatch this edge, which is rad. And then you're getting above the bolt as well, so it's a little bit engaging, uh, if you know what I'm saying. And then uh, then you have to climb a little bit further above the bolt as well. Okay, you can shake out there a bit, but it's not as good as the last rest, so you, you're cooking by this stage, basically. From there, you just really have to bone down for the rest of it. So I think 13 or maybe 15 move boulder problem to the top, and it's just like tucked into the wall, thin edges, really snatchy moves, but you have to hold the positions pretty perfectly to, um, to be able to sort of get yourself up there. Uh, yeah. I was definitely screaming like, I don't know, some sort of, I don't know. Cool. 
That was quite beautiful. I'll admit it, I'm pretty terrified of doing a handstand on the end of that. No, it's the first time he's admitted he's scared. Maybe. Not the first time. So you scared before. With that clapped out parachute. This clapped out parachute. That one. Why can't your feet together? You'll be fine. It was a death swing malfunction. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Quietness. <laughs> oh, you got the microphone right there as well. <laughs> yeah, that's actually why I'm wearing this outfit. In case I get lost, you can find me. Well, it'd be a game. That's fine, Lucky. Where's Lucky? Fuck knows what these straps are for. Just tuck them away. Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> and action. Action. It's like a porn movie, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. The excitement, yeah. very good. Memories. <laughs> High five. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was very good. Okay. <laughs> it's a long action. I can't get it out. Ah. I can't get it out. Fuck. Funny clone shoes. <laughs> okay. Quick guy. Okay. Oh, on, the 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 Come on, have my sack. Come on. You need to breathe out first. Breathe out first. Come on. And have you ever been injured or seriously hurt when uh, you've been doing shit? <laughs> Let's start that one again. Do you mean Lucky, who's like over there, <laughs> next to the table? Hey. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Lucky just wants dinner. I feel like lucky to not. I shouldn't really sing that. That's kind of bad. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the question I was asking? <clears throat> I've totally forgotten. Past experience. No, this week. Ah, uh, yep. More relevant. Yes. Yes, yeah, good. Okay. So are you smitten with the uh, smitten? And what's it been like working with uh, Ed Thornhill and Mike Myers? I'm glad you asked, actually. No, um, smitten's been going really well. A great opportunity to get out of my system a lot of stuff I've been wanting to get out of my system. I'm living up at Surface Paradise now, there's no base jumping there. When Ed called me up and asked whether I wanted to come down, you know, for a week of base jumping, I thought, unreal, this is right up my alley, this is exactly what I want to do. And it's been going really well, working with Ed and working with Mike Myers, two highly professional people. <laughs> They've been around the block. 
they've done a thing or two. So, and you can really tell that. And to work with such professional people is a real kick. Can I laugh now? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Nice. <laughs> what the fuck? Some fucking cricket on the heart. <laughs> Come on. Me. Come on. Ah! Oh, I'm really coke bottle, I think. Take fucking hell. Fucking hell. Fuck! Fucking dick! Fucking god! Sorry. Oh, it's just fucking greasing up. <laughs> All the farmers keep fucking looking at me. <laughs> Go away, you old fool. <laughs> Any justice? <laughs> yeah, I want that. What the post making that like? Hold on. Oh, fucking hell, come on, grow! <laughs> Let's stretch it! Yeah. Okay, 30 seconds at the moment. Oh, I've got six. 10 seconds, mate. She's on the edge. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> She's telling me to shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure. Don't let the fly out too fast. Okay. 